this video, we're going to see a few ways of constructing continuous functions given one or more continuous functions. Before we start, let me remind you that you can support the channel by joining our Patreon monthly subscription that will give you access to exclusive content and mathematics merchandising. You can also make small donations on coffee or buy the merchandising that you want in our mathematics store. So let's start with the video. In our last video, we saw that some functions like the identity that usually were continuous are not necessarily when working on different topologies. Well, let's see one of those usual functions that is continuous with this new definition. We have x and y, two topological spaces, and a function between them. If the function is constant, that is, it always takes the same element y0 for some y0 in y, then f is continuous. To prove this, it's actually not that hard. Let's take b, an open set in y. So b is an element in the y topology. But what is the pre-image of b? If b has y0, then the pre-image of b will be every element in x, because for every x in x, f of x0 is y0, so it's an element in b. So this one will give us all x. And if y is not an element of b, then the pre-image will be the empty set. And these two sets are always in a topology. So the pre-image of p through f is always in the x topology. Doesn't matter which two topologies we're working with, the constant function is always continuous. Now let's suppose we have two functions, f and g. So f, let's say, that goes from x to y, and g from y to another space, set that these two are continuous, then g composed with f is also continuous. g composed with f is a function that goes from x to set. So to see that it's continuous, we should take an open set V in this set topology. And what we want to see is that the pre-image of V through the composition is an open set. What is this? Well, this is going to be the pre-image of F composed with the pre-image of G in B. So this is using just the definition of a composition. It's f minus 1 in g minus 1 of p. But now because g is continuous and b is an open set in set, then this set is open. And so we're taking the pre-image through f of an open set. So all this is also open. And so the pre-image of p through the composition is also open. And then we have that the composition is continuous. Another example of a function that's continuous no matter what space we're working with is when we have a function and we take A, a subset of X, and we give A the subspace topology. Then we can consider the restriction F restricted to A as a function from A with the subspace topology onto Y. Well, to prove this again, we have to take P, an open set, in the Y topology. And we need to see what the pre-image of the restriction is. Well, this is going to be just using the definition of what is restricting a function. It's going to be all the x in A, such that f of x is an element in B. But this set is the same as saying all the x in our space x such that f of x is an element in b. This set intersection a. But now this first set is the pre-image of b through f. And then intersection a. So because f was continuous, this is open. 
in x. And so this intersection is an open set in A with a subspace topology. So that proves that the preimage of P in the restriction function is an open set and so the function is continuous. Let's finish this video with a very famous lemma that you have probably been using a lot with regular functions, but now we know that it will also be true in topological spaces. This theorem that is also known as the pasting lemma tells us that we have two functions with two domains that are actually forming our whole space. So f goes from a to y and g from b to y. These two functions are continuous. Then it tells us that if they have the same values for all the elements in their intersection, then this function that is basically just pasting f and g is continuous. So let's make a drawing to see what this theorem is actually stating. Suppose this is A, A and B have to be closed, so this is A, and this is B. Let's suppose that my function f does something like this, and in this middle set here it's constant. And my function g does, well, the same here, and then it goes on like this. Then basically what this lemma is saying is that the function that is just pasting these two is continuous. And this happens only because here the values of f and g were the same, because this set here is a intersection b. But it makes sense, because if we had another situation, now let's say again this is a, and this other set if, is b, if my function did something like this and the other one did something like this, then when I would define this function h, I would come here and when I reach this point in which x is both in a and in b, I wouldn't know how to define my function like this or like this. So that is why we're asking here to have f of x equal to g of x for all the elements in the intersection. Here we will already have problems and then my function would know how to continue. But in the intersection, if f is different than g, then we are in trouble. To prove this lemma, we will not use the usual definition of continuity. We will actually use the closed set version. So we'll prove that the preimage of a closed set is a closed set. So let's call f a closed set in y. And let's see what happens with the preimage of f through h. For this, we can use this drawing. So let's say I have here a closed set, f, and what I want to do is get the preimage of this set. And this will be this set here. Okay, my drawing is a bit off, but you get the idea. So this set here in the domain is the preimage of f through h. Now, given that, f and g are the same here in the middle, then I can write this as the union of the preimage of f through f and the preimage of f through g. Now, given that f and g were continuous functions, then the preimages of closed sets for both functions are also closed sets. And we know that the finite union of closed sets is also closed. So we have that the preimage of any closed set is also a closed set, and so h is continuous.